continue with the aims of education, particularly for peace, let's focus on some skills that are important. And so we will focus our attention to some more modern educators. The neo darwinian Maxine Green's understanding of education is releasing persons to be different. If we are all the same, things are not going to work. And as human beings, we will never all be the same. So what do we do? How do we get the individual in you to actually come out? And how do we make you different? And this happens through inherently reflecting concepts of freedom and choice, listening and dialoguing in order to view things as they might be. So talking about issues, dialoguing, discussing, negotiating, compromising, working towards a mutually beneficial solution is important. J.R. Martin schools at homes the importance of nurturing. Children come to us in kindergarten. Okay, they are three, four years old, five years old, depends at what level they begin. But before that, they've spent two, three years at home. That nurturing environment, according to J.R. Martin, is important. So homes should also function as schools. Homes are places where young people first begin to learn. And starting from there, if we worked with peace, children coming to school would be already prepared in many ways. Sarah Ruddick says, maternal love giving rise to maternal practice can promote peace. And that is why in many schools, in most schools actually, your preschool and early years teachers are women. Because women can give that maternal love, which will give rise to maternal practice, and that can promote peace. As people have said, a mother's love cannot be replaced by anything else. There's a reason why our early years teachers are women. Hooks says, teaching to transgress only happens with adequate nurturing. Teaching to transgress means teaching to go a different way. Teaching to question. Yes, you said this, but I think this. Yes, you said this. What if this? And so, not saying yes, yes, yes to everything the teacher says, but questioning what the teacher says is equally important. No dichotomy between education and social change. Healing of the world can happen if teachers know themselves and their students. Working with young people and as adults in their lives, it is important, it is critical to understand the young person from the young person's perspective. That is what will bring about the change in young people. And education and social change go together. If you get a good education, social change will happen. How? You get a better job. You are better qualified, you get a better salary, you deliver, you've learned, you've done things, your increments get better, and so automatically social change comes about that way. The goal of knowledge arising from love is the reunification and construction of broken selves and worlds. Today, there is a lot of conflict. Whether we want to accept it or not, conflict exists. And so, how do you bring peace? How do you heal these broken worlds of individuals? Young children that come from broken homes, from homes where parents are divorced, from homes where parents don't get along, all that makes a difference. And so how does the teacher step in? How does the teacher work? And a lot of times, I think the teacher's job is to educate the parents more than it is to educate the child. Contemporary view on peace education reflects the evolution of its concept from the beginning of the peace research movement in the 40s and 50s. So in the real world, research on peace started in the 1940s and 50s. That's a good 70, 80 years ago. That's where we have begun to learn about what conflict is, how conflict happens, why it happens, to deal with different causes of conflict and to bring about peace and sustain it and make sure it survives and can guarantee peace from one generation to another. 
However, its roots go back much further. Because before the 40s, it's not as if conflict didn't exist. Conflict existed, but there's no record. Writing wasn't there or people did not keep accurate records and transcripts of things. And so to assume that before the 1940s, Peace and conflict were not important or conflict didn't exist is incorrect. Reformers such as Adams and Fanny Fern Andrews and many more reformers, I'm sure we can name many reformers from our part of the world also, their works, their studies also deals with skills. What is it that it takes to teach and practice peace? IPRA, which is the International Peace Research Association, 1965, and COPRED, which is the Consortium on Peace, Research, Education, and Development in the 1970s. So there are lots of international groups that have been put together to try and help individuals learn from their experiences and to promote peace and conflict resolution and conflict management in their own respective areas as well. These were the outgrowths of the work done by Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. A lot of work that we see today have come from women movement areas because women were suppressed, that was a conflict, and the developed worlds took this on much earlier than we have, and therefore, what is it that we need to do in our part of the world so that peace will exist, peace will be sustained, and our young people will learn to cope with and resolve conflicts in their own unique ways. 